This is a short training video on how to use the built-in REST API in the Do More Bricks PLC. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. And of course, API stands for Application Programming Interface. But really all you need to know about it is this feature allows you to utilize a URL, otherwise known as a Uniform Resource Locator Address, to read memory locations from the Bricks PLC. Everyone who uses a web browser uses a URL. For example, the URL is the particular .com website you type in to go where you want to go and always begins with HTTP colon slash slash. First of all, the REST API web server came about with Do More Technology version 2.8 and only in the BRICS style Do More PLCs. But only the BRICS PLCs that have a built-in Ethernet port are equipped with this. It's a web server that can be accessed by any web browser using the IP address of the BRICS PLC as the URL. The web server will return a default web page, giving some general information about the BRICS PLC. We'll talk about that in a video of its own because you can learn to make your own web pages. Furthermore, the web server on the BRICS not only serves up a default web page, but also has the REST API that allows access to the memory elements in the BRICS PLC via that web browser or any other web client programming package. The request is made via a properly formatted URL, which we'll discuss in a second. The response coming back presents the data requested in the popular JSON data format. The REST API can return the contents of any memory in the PLC. This includes bits, numerics, strings, and even structures. But how is the URL properly formatted to take advantage of this feature? Before we get into that, it is important to know this feature is for reading only. None of the memory locations can be written to using this feature. So what is the format of the URL necessary to utilize the REST API? To get a single element, it looks like this. The purple sections are the static text required. The other colored things in angle brackets are the variables required. First is the BRICS PLC's IP address. Second is the name you provide. It can be anything you want it to be. Third is the BRICS element name itself. Thus, an example might look like this. Notice the IP address of the BRICS. I chose the name of scan count and the element I want to see was a system double word, DST0, which in the BRICS PLC is called dollar sign scan counter, and it's incremented every scan. If I type this URL in manually in my web browser, what would be the result? This. Notice the data value in DST0 is the value portion of a name value pair called scan count. It's presented as a single JSON object properly contained in curly braces. Scan count is the name I chose to call it. Also, even though this value is constantly changing, this URL will only give the value of DST that was read at that moment. It will not continually update unless you keep hitting the refresh button in your browser. Another very important thing to know here is that I don't have to use the raw element name like DST0. Instead, I could use the tag name. This is also called a nickname in Do More Designer. That is either automatically assigned in the case of system elements or one that you have previously assigned in your BRICS PLC. This would change the example here to use dollar sign scan counter, which is the tag name of the system element DST0. The result, of course, would be exactly the same. You need to keep this very important thing in mind because most people when programming a PLC utilize tag names extensively simply because it makes more sense to have a familiar name for the elements used rather than the raw, less relevant element name itself. So what if I wanted to get several non-contiguous elements? Notice all that is needed is to append another name equals element by using an ampersand. The dots at the end here just mean etc. So, in this example, I'm getting five elements separated by ampersands. I'm asking for several non-contiguous system data double words, DST0, 
3, 12, 18, and 22. The result looks like this. Again, it's a JSON object, but it contains multiple name value pairs properly separated by commas and using the names that I gave each element. Once again, don't forget, I could use the tag names of the DSTs instead, making the example look like this. And the result would, of course, be the same. What if I wanted several contiguous elements? To get contiguous elements, I merely have to follow the name equals part with a comma and a count. This count can be up to 128. So in this example, notice I am getting 10 DST starting with DST0, and then I am using an ampersand to get another group of 10 X's this time, starting with X10, and then four strings starting with SS0. The result? This. Notice here that the contiguous values are given in a JSON array. And since I requested three groups of contiguous values by utilizing the ampersand in my request, then the resultant JSON object has these three arrays properly separated by commas. But again, make note, what if my X10 input element had a tag name or a nickname of, let's say, conveyor? Then the URL could use the tag name of conveyor instead of the raw element name of X10. Always keep this in mind. Now let's talk about the BRICS structure elements, which have various members. As you may or may not know, when you display a structure element in a data view and do more designer software, for example, and not a particular member of that structure, there are two formats accommodated there, the short format and the long format. Similarly, but not exactly the same way, when using a REST API, it supports differing responses, a short version, a long version, and one called an all-inclusive version. To get a short version, you request a particular structure and follow that by a comma S, like so. In this example, I'm asking for the program code block structure $main and also utilizing the ampersand again to ask for the short version of the structure for timer 6. What happens? This. This looks like a mess. Well, let's make it pretty by using the popular JSON pretty print. So now we can get this instead. Some very important things to notice. As you can see, it returns the structure members of $main as multiple name value pairs, where each name is the actual name of the structure member in real life. The same happens to the timer 6's structure. These are not all the members, but just the short list. This time, the only difference is using the letter L instead of S, which of course stands for long. So the example is the same, except for the letter L. Result? This. Making it pretty, you'll notice there are some extra name value pairs added, as indicated in red. Now there's one more, and this one asks for every single member of any particular structure. Notice here, the only difference in the format of the URL, in my example, is the letter A. Result? This huge, big mess. Every single structure member for $main is returned, and since $main has 128 stage bits, every single one of them are given in a JSON data format. You may also notice at the end of this mess, where timer 6 structure members are returned, it isn't any longer. This is simply because, in this particular case, there just weren't any more to add to the long version. Making it pretty, it's easier to read, and we abbreviate it a little bit. You'll notice the extra name value pairs once again, indicated in red. There's one more I want you to be familiar with. Perhaps I don't want all that mess to have to parse through. I can get a single structure member just by asking for it, using the dot to separate the structure name from the member just like I would enter it in a data view in do more designer software. So the example asks merely for one member in each of the structures. And as you can see, the result is short and sweet. So how does one go about enabling this feature in the BRICS PLC? The REST API feature is not enabled by default. To enable, go to the system configuration either via the menu, selecting PLC system configuration, or by pressing the Configure button. And when you do, there is a small box called Web Server HTTP right here. 
you'll have to enable it, and then press the HTTP Settings button to see more. So here you can see the maximum concurrent sessions. By default, it's set to four. This is the number of simultaneous HTTP sessions the web server will maintain. The thing to remember here is that if you make this number larger, that each session will consume PLC memory and add processing time to the PLC scan. Once the session limit is reached, all other requests will be rejected. By default, the TCP port number for web browsers is 80. In the Enable Features box, various options are available. The first is the REST API. This must be checked in order for what we have just discussed to work. But what are the rest of these options? The onboard web server automatically builds several web pages that can be displayed in a web browser. The rest of the options here allow you to turn each one of these on or off. These web pages will be covered in another video. And once you have enabled the REST API, you must write that down to the BRICS PLC. But now, knowing how to use the REST API in the BRICS PLC, this begs the question of security. Can just anyone see what's happening in my PLC? If you enable this, then yes, by default, anyone on your local network could utilize this feature. So what could be done? Back to the system configuration, there is a box right here called Server Whitelist. You'll have to enable it and then press the Whitelist Settings button to see more. There is a lot that we can say about this dialog, which we may cover in another video of its own. Suffice it to say briefly, the function of this whitelist is to allow access to BRICS PLC resources to certain IP addresses of the network that have been previously identified as safe. All other IP addresses will be rejected, but enabling this whitelist doesn't really do anything unless you make some changes in this dialog. With regards to HTTP and REST API, if we put an X in the box, then you'll notice the Add button at the right is enabled. Then if you press the Add button, you can add IP addresses, one at a time, if they're non-contiguous, or IP address ranges to the whitelist. Here, I enter my PC's IP address, for example, and then I press the OK button. The result is this. This now means that the only IP address that can utilize the REST API is my particular PC in this case. All other IP addresses that attempt to utilize this service will be rejected. Be careful here, because it makes no sense to enable the whitelist and then have no entry for it. In the case shown, the only IP addresses being scrutinized are the ones that attempt to use the REST API. Now, since I don't have any of the other services X'd, then no discriminating is going to occur with those services. Armed with this information, you should be able to read whatever you want from your BRICS PLC with any HTTP client, whether that client is simply a web browser like Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, or something much more useful like a web client programming package. Have fun, and thanks for watching.